Em and Louis. I'm Gemma, Louis behind the camera filming at the moment. This is our van tour video and we've been living in our van about a year so we thought it was about time to show everybody what we've done. The van is a long wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter 2013 and we converted everything ourselves so here we go, I'll show you around the van. This is a fold out table that we decided to do kind of last minute but it worked really well. It was just some pine wood from the shop called The Range and we just varnished it the same as everything else. I like it because it's small and it's just nice if you've got a camping chair outside or you can just sit here, just put your cup of tea or whatever you want there and it's just a nice little fold out outside table. And we just put some hooks on there and spray painted them white as well just to kind of keep it uniform. So that is the product table. Here we had this matting from Ikea. I think we bought two because of the length so we had to cut it up and make it fit. But again, like in the cab, this is just for muddy shoes and then you can just kind of use your boots there and then a his and hers side for our shoes. Just to help with like mud or mess. This is a little brush, I think it's a potato cleaner brush actually, and it just flicks out loads of mud and things as well, and that always stays in the shoe area. So, coming up, I will take my shoes off, because we like to have no shoes in the van. I'm Nate Murphy, author of the Van Conversion Guide, and I just want to let you know that I'm hosting a free online training which will teach you how to make van life zero cost or profitable. In this free seminar, I will show you exactly how to choose a van, build it out in a profitable way, and avoid the mistakes that most people make. I will show you how I made van life completely free and a bunch of other stuff that people don't really talk about. If you want to join, click the link here or in the description and register for free. I'll see you there. So coming up to here, I wanted it to look really homey kind of as soon as the doors open, so we do have some plans and uh, we have seven in total now. One is fake, but I won't say which one, so if you can see which one it is. But yeah, we've got some real plants here at the front and a little basket. This is more for Louis to kind of put his bits and bobs in there. And we also have a really strong flashlight, which is good. Looking into this area, so this is our kitchen and we wanted the bulkhead because it gave us more countertop space. So we ripped the original bulkhead out of the van when we bought it, it was just a panel van and then we just created our own wall with just different pieces of wood and then we put insulation board in between just to make it solid and then we put a hatch inside and that is for emergencies mainly so if we have to jump in the front quickly and drive away then we can just do that with a little hook on this side and it does work really well. It was quite hard to build because everything in the van is kind of wonky and wood is never <laughs> totally straight. So it's got quirky character, but it closes and that's amazing. <laughs> and here we just have an overhead cupboard, which in the cab a moment ago, you might have seen the gray carpet above my head. That's because we built a overhead cupboard into the cab area. And there is a lot of room in here this is the place that we keep our blinds for our windows and this is where we keep our towels, rugs and cushions and extra bedding as well. Things that is light because we didn't want to put too much weight on our cupboard. And that just closes nicely. So you'll see in all of our overhead cupboards we made the cupboard front with rattan and some glue and then just pieces of wood that we put together because everything in here is handmade didn't buy anything like a flat packed furniture or anything like that everything is built for the van and our design we have a smoke alarm because that's always safe to have in the van we also have a carbon monoxide alarm as well but that's over there here is the spice rack which i really love because it just shows off those colors and we're big foodies we love to cook a lot another reason why we wanted this countertop space and if we didn't have the wall here we wouldn't be able to have space to cook so that's why we've got such a big top here. Now the wood is from a shop called The Range, same as this wood and here and here. It's a really good price and what we did was we just put like a floor varnish on it 
Our first time round we used an outdoor varnish and it went very tacky and sticky so we had to rip everything out over the winter just gone and then we had to put the new wood on and we put a different varnish and this is really solid it holds its shine really well and it's just good for lots of usage on the top. Coming down here we've got four drawers and they're all on runners and everything in here is just our kitchenware so we have a lot of utensils and we like to have the style of wood so there's a lot of olive wood things in here so that's kind of the style that we wanted to go for this one here is a junk drawer so everyone has one of these i think where there's just random stuff chucked in there if you don't know where else to put things this one is where we have our cups and bowls and everything like that and there is two of us in the van and there's more than enough for having friends over and things as well and then the last one is where we have our cooking appliances so i'll just show you our cooking equipment so this is a low wattage induction hob and we just plug it in here and this runs off a 240 volt which then runs off the inverter so we have to put the button on to use anything with the plugs. But that fits really nicely, it's really light. The next thing that we use is our portable camping stove. And again, that can sit anywhere here. What we like to do when we cook is have our fold-up table up because then that gives us a lot more room. Normally I have this here and then you have the induction hob there and still it gives you all of this to chop and cook and everything. So it's good to have two options. Also that locks in place, we put two locks here so that's very stable. In this long cupboard, this is where we keep our pots and pans. And as you can see at the back, there is a air fryer, which again is low wattage. So that's three forms of cooking. That just plugs in there of the 240 volt. So looking down here where our fridge is. So again, these are on sturdy runners because of the weight of the fridge and we just made this cupboard to pull out. This brand is an Apical and it's a portable fridge freezer, so it has both. And I'll show you. This is the fridge side and then this is the freezer side. It works really, really well. There's different settings on there. We have it on Eco quite a lot. This runs off the 12 volt, so it is a low wattage fridge freezer. And the size is really good. Uh, for two people, we can have a lot of food in there that's really nice. Okay, so I'll just go in the shower to show you how roomy it is. When we built it, both of us stood in it just to see if it would be nice and roomy, and it is It is narrower this way, um, but it's quite long this way. So that's the reason why we put our shower caddies here, because this is the longest side, and it doesn't get in the way of arms. Showering. Here we have a waterproof light. That's a dimmable one, so that's really nice at night. Sometimes I put that light on to give like a nice glow in the kitchen rather than the ceiling lights. Going down here, this is our porta potty. It's a chemical toilet. It's Thetford and it's a 365. We do recommend this toilet and we also do recommend our chemicals and we'll put all these links in, in the description below. With our toilet, we probably empty it about once a week and that's two of us using it normally like you would in a house. So you might be wondering where our food storage is as there isn't many overhead cupboards here. So we made this pull out pantry and it's really big. We love to cook and we love to have loads of ingredients. So down here at the bottom is where we keep our vegetables and we use these bungees just so food doesn't fall out. Then we keep our fruit on the second to bottom one. And then here is just like our kind of dry stores and everything. Then this is teas and coffees. And then this is kind of our health section. At the top, we've got multiple bottles. We've got a Nutribullet. How we built it, as you can see this wood here, I had an old shoe rack. We broke it down and then this is how we built the, the shelving for the pull out pantry and we just made it uh, like a white front, just so it blends in. Then we put these rope handles on, which is really good. And then we've got two locks at the front because when we drive, we've had an issue where we forgot to close it once and it flew out and then it chipped the front of the wood here. But we decided to have locks on because it is very heavy. And the reason also is because it is on four wheels. So if we didn't have the locks, it would go in and out and it's just dangerous. <laughs> Coming over here, we have a little plant. We have a black mixer tap. If this comes all the way out, it's on the swivel. And then also you can extend it if you've 
got sand on your feet or you just want to wash something down and we wanted everything to match here we have our max air fan it's the deluxe model and this is really good i'll just turn it on now because this is our shower and our kitchen area there will be steam with cooking and then also steam with a hot shower so we decided to have it above the shower and when the curtain is across the steam will come up here it draws air in and it also sucks air out so that's really good and we have the remote that stays up here all the time these are little pictures of us working at our festivals last year we have our key hook this is our sink the extra wood we use it as a multi-purpose sink cover and also a chopping board that gives us extra countertop space to cook and to put things on here. Our sink is from b &Q. It is a standard size sink, so it's not small and it's really good to hide dishes in there and then you can just put the sink cover back on. Here we just have our standard cleaning things for the kitchen and we have a little movable mirror which is really nice because this cupboard is where we keep all of our toiletries. So you've got a Louis side, You've got a toothpaste, medicine, and then you've got my beauty side. So we have a battery powered under sink light, which is really good. And it's just attached by a magnet. We can have the shower light. We can have the under sink light and it just gives like a nice vibe in the van. So going down here is everything that you would normally have in your kitchen. What we've got in here is we have a organic food bin and then we have our general waste bin we have a window squeegee which is really good for condensation on the windows we have a mini vacuum which is really really good and we'll put links for everything in our description here we have a grey tank and we have a tube that goes under there near the shoes and that's how we empty our grey tank waste and that's quite easy here is where we keep our kitchen rags and cleaning utensils our toilet chemicals and anti-back things we also have our drying mat for dishes our laundry stuff at the back we do have a dry powder fire extinguisher because we felt that it was really important to have two of those in the van one lives under the sink and the other one lives in the garage and that does cover most fires to have the dry powder also at the back we've got a little laundry washing machine that you you rub and then we have this really sweet mini iron <laughs> that we have used it was only a pound from a car boot so we're really chuffed with that and to make more storage we just elevated some storage boxes just so that not everything is on the floor but things are up higher and then here we've just got some face cloths a mini stool so that's what lives under the kitchen sink this is our living room area we have here our boiler switch and we just turn that on and then after about 10-15 minutes we have hot water for the shower above that we have our carbon monoxide alarm we have that and the smoke alarm because that's really important in the van so this side this is my bookshelf louis has another one down the other end and it is quite deep so you can fit a lot of books in there how we built that we just built the whole frame first we kind of had the idea that we wanted either end to be an open bookshelf and then we just put these round wood rods at the front to keep everything in we've made everything from scratch so this is all wood put together and inside each cupboard you have the hinges and the rattan so this cupboard we have all of our camera equipment and we have magnets for each of the cupboards so then they don't open when we're on the road and we haven't had any open yet so that's really good and for the handle we have this fake leather white material moving down to this one this is our second living room cupboard and in here we've just got things like incense photographs candles books magazines cards and then going down to the end is louis side and he has a lot of books in there fairy lights that go all the way along and then behind here it's just a battery so they don't use any electric we have our clock a few crystals and some coasters and we have two shelves one here and one on the other side how we made those was just plywood and then we just put two white brackets underneath and everything is really really solid this is our swivel table we decided to go for this because it's just really practical in the van have it all directions and it just does like a 360 which is really good and we had the arm on the longer side because where it sits you can fit three people on this side one person here and two here and the table reaches everybody really so on top again it's the same wood as all of the kitchen tops it was just from the range and we put 
on this one a resin and we wanted the resin because it gave a very shiny look and it's very hard wearing because we eat off here a lot and we have lots of things going on here so we wanted it to be durable. So now we're going to talk about the couch and the living area. With all the couches Jem and I both decided we're not going to buy like a normal one so we decided to cut up an old mattress that was living in our storage unit so we cut those all up and it's made all of this pretty much all the lounge area the the covers which shows this mustard cover that was all Gemma spent about two weeks learning how to do it and as well as doing all the covers for the pillows which is as you can see done really really well really really nice and comfortable honestly like I can say anything more it's just really nice and comfortable and because the space in between is not too far you can kind of relax and sort of Cozy. Anyway, so underneath all the living area is a lot of storage. We used plywood just to give it a little bit more of a sturdiness. We wanted most of them to sort of flip up so it was just easy access. In this one, we have loads of storage for extra dry foods and like milks that we haven't put in the fridge. We have quite a lot of storage in there. Usually we get rid of the cardboard boxes. Next to it, as you can see, we have our diesel heater. Our diesel heater is bolted to the floor and it has a exhaust and an air intake under the van, but it also has an air intake at the back. You don't ever install these too close because they need as much air intake as possible. But that comes out here. Once you turn it on, it takes about 10 minutes to heat up this whole van. It's really, really good. It's all connected via the batteries. It's on a 12 volt system, so it doesn't take too much power at all. The way we turn it on is we have a little controller down here. Just press it on and it will start heating the actual coil up so then it can start blowing out hot air. This one, we didn't decide to put on hinges. We decided to put Velcro. So this one comes out. That is where we have our water boiler. It's a 10 liter Truma Combi boiler. It has an exhaust that goes through the outside of the van. It takes in cold water and pumps out hot water when we uh, decide to turn it on. And the way you turn this on is up here. You always turn it upwards because then it uses less wattage. However you want it done quicker, you can turn it down. And that is connected to our 240 volt system, which you can turn on via this button down here and it turns the inverter on. There's a little bit more space under here as well, but to be honest, we don't want anything sort of like damaging any of the pipes for the water system and also the electrical system. So under our last one on the right side of the van, we just have a few more extra little bits. All the water system, the diesel for the diesel heater and the electric pass through here. We've tried to zip tie them and attach them to the pieces of wood to make it nice and neat. We keep a couple of little games in here. We have a few extra bags and stuff like that. So this is our center bit of storage. There's another seat that sort of actually goes in and out, but we've realized over time that we like it permanently out. It's just nicer to have fixed living room. Also in the back, it does give a little bit more room in our little garage under our bed. So we just keep it there, but that does slide in and out and it goes nice and flush through here. But another pillow you can take out. And as you lift this up, We've got loads of storage. Under here, we've got sort of like sports gear, so like yoga mats, football. We've got Gemma's art stuff, because she's really into art. But yeah, just a load of other random little bits, mainly for our hobbies. Nice and sturdy, little bit of frame, nice comfy pillow, and that sits on top of there. On this side, is a bit more storage. So under here, as you can see, we've got a few more wires. Most of the wiring that goes to all the lights or all the fridge and you know, all that sort of flows through there. Um, we try to neaten that up. I might neaten that up a little bit more. This is all the water system that goes to the sink. It's all pinned. In here, we have our laundry. Just here, we do have another socket point, which only works when the inverter is on. Best thing about this one is we have two USB chargers, which we can charge our phones off. Talking about blow on the floor, when we did the build, we decided we want the floor to have some sort of insulation as well. So we first of all, we put like a load of framing down on the floor so then we can make sure the floors can be nice and sturdy. We just put Celotex in between and then we take that down. And then after we put 12 mil ply boards, which went all the way around. This is our bedroom. So this is a fixed bed. The reason we wanted that was because we wanted a lot of storage in the garage. We wanted everything as it is, so it's just really nice and easy every day. This was my old mattress, and it is a standard double. It's very thick, which is really, really comfy, and we both sleep really well in here. The only thing we had to change about it is that we had to 
cut off about seven inches off the end of the bed and we did that with a bread knife so we do sleep really well in here to have a good night's sleep we only have to sleep slightly diagonal and then we can fully stretch out here we have a curtain this is just a thermal curtain from Dunnell it just gives a bit more privacy for us both so it divides the area a little bit more but it does block out the light as well so if someone was in here and they wanted all the lights on then this area would be totally dark and that's really lovely on the side i just put a little command hook and then you can kind of just twist it and then put it to the side moving over here we made a small laptop shelf because lots of things in a van is about convenience and ease so we knew that things like laptops would be taken out a lot so we didn't just want them sitting on a table or just thrown on the bed and this is on my side on the wall and it's just with both laptops and then there's other room for other little bits in there also by our heads each of us have a reading light on either side there's two usb connections which is really good because as you can see here we just have our phone chargers on each side and then you can have two things charging at once we have a little phone holder that just sticks on the wall there and that can also keep our wires nice and neat and as you can see here you just turn it on and there's two adjustments there on the 12 volt system as well they're really handy again for bringing different shapes within the van having different lightings in different areas up here we have our skylight so this is a Dometic Mini Hecky. You have like the fly netting, which is really good to let the light in, but then no bugs can come in. And then this way is the total blackout here. You can just open the skylight really easily. The reason that we fitted the skylight sideways and not the typical front to back is because with our head sleeping here, we wanted to access the handle really easily and then also have the skylight coming up so we can look up and see the stars and then we can just easily close it and that locks in place really nicely. We have these two storage hangers, they are actually for cots for babies to put like their little toys in and things. They're really really handy and we just have hooks along the top. These are my three and then these are Louis's three. Diaries, Kindle, um, sleeping things, I have like eye masks and stuff and then we have books and other bits and bobs. Also here we just have some family pictures and a nice dream catcher. And then above here we have our four overhead storage cupboards, all made the same way with the rattan. With the four cupboards we have two each. A lot of the time I open them and it's a booby trap <laughs> so my socks just fell out and it keeps you on your toes and alert. If you just make cabinets right and make sure that you make them as big as possible, then you really can bring loads of clothes with you. I feel like I'm not missing out on anything. Louis has these too. He keeps everything nice and folded and neat. Whereas in my cupboards, I have more of these storage bags. In the last cupboard, which is Louis's one, we have the Wi-Fi system. As you can see here, this is our Netgear internet. We bought this online and we actually saw a video on YouTube and he recommended this one. And then we bought it and realized it was really, really good for the upload speed. And then we just attached it through the roof. There's a hole there and Louis stuck on the satellite on top of the roof more towards the front of the van. That works really, really well. You just put a SIM card in, we're with EE and we have had no problems at all with either where we are or upload or download speed everything's been really good and to power the netgear box we just have a wire that comes across the top it's black all along the top and then that comes down into the usb charging point here and these chargers are on all the time so on the sliding door and the back doors we wanted to not have any metal showing so we went for the black carpet and we just bought this online it was really cheap it came in a big roll and we just attached it with some adhesive spray but underneath the carpet in certain areas is some dodo fleecing that we stuffed in the holes and then on top of that we just sellotaped down some of the bubble foil for the water vapor barrier and then on top of that we just use the same cladding just to make it nice and neat and carry on the wood look so we bought these windows from band pimps and we installed them ourselves the both both these back windows and also the side one uh, it went very well there was no issues with that it came with a nice kit with everything that you need so we do recommend that company if you wanted to put your own windows in let's go in the front and we'll show you what we have in our cab 
So firstly in the door we just have all of our shopping bags for food. It's easier to have as much stuff packed at the front as possible. It gives you more space in the back. And here we have our shoe storage. We do have little areas down here for our shoes that we wear daily. But we have a lot of different shoes for the different seasons. So here is all of our shoes in there. And that's a lot of storage in there so we can fit many pairs of shoes. We put this matting down just for like muddy boots and things. And then we put a bungee and had our shoes on either side. So Louis got his on his side and then on my side I just got some quick, easy slip on shoes just to chuck on whenever we need. So going in. Up the top we've got two bungees that we decided to keep up there permanently. And this is good for like hanging damp clothes. It keeps everything out of the back and it does get quite hot in here so it's good to kind of hang things up out of the way and also just put other things up there like Lou's cowboy hat and everything and then we just made it homely really with some little pictures and some plants hanging and uh, little macrame things and crystals just to make it homey but also to keep it quite minimal okay so this is mainly where Louis is as he is the main driver <laughs> or the sole driver at the moment he has a little cactus uh, but it's very minimal you don't want much stuff in the front on the back wall we just put carpet on there and it's a nice solid wall so because of that we put these clothes hangers and it just means we can hang up all of our coats and we got a skipping rope there and other random bits that we need behind the seats if I just show you <laughs> this might take some time. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Behind the seats we just bought these storage hangers that normally go in cars for children but it's really good. It's got loads of pockets so we've got just loads of random things in there. A didgeridoo <laughs> and a golf glove. <laughs> and also this is where we keep our window screens for privacy and for the heat. So they always live behind the driver's seat as well. So now time for the good bit. So we've got a permanent bed, as you can see. The best thing about this is that we have a big garage room. Pick these up, put them across under the bed. Nice and neat. And there you can see our garage. So in the garage, it's a little bit messy at the moment because we're just about to start a new job festival. So we've got a few extra things up in there, but we've got the basics. We've got our standoff paddle boards in the back, got a hose just in case we want to sort of fill, fill our tank and we need like a, an extended hose from any sort of tap. Uh, so that just hangs there. Also, if we don't find a tap and then if you have to walk a little bit further, then we've got our water bottles. These things are incredibly essential for van life. Really, really good. They fold down. Uh, they, these ones are 10 litres and we've got a bigger one, which is 20 litres and they're really good for space saving. On the right side of the van, we've got our water system and we've got our diesel heater system. Right next to where we store the diesel for the diesel heater, we've got our fire extinguisher. We actually got these from Lidl. Under that, just in case we don't fill up the diesel when we're at a petrol station, I've got a five litre diesel container. So a little bit further on, uh, slightly deeper, we've got 20 PSI Sureflow water pump. It runs off a 12 volt system. We use John Guest piping which is all done by pressure. There's no having to tighten the fitting. So that's all the stuff that we use to fill up our water for the van. Other things that we do store in here, just for the camping stove that we have for our cooking, we do have a thing in here which has the portable camping stoves. We store about five or six of them in there. We have our stand-up paddle boards in the back. We have a hammock, a toiletries box. So anything we can't fit in the van, we've got loads of spares, portable barbecue, two toolboxes. One's got all the tools in it and then the other one has got all the spares. So like the vinyl flooring, bits of wood, bits of carpet. Of course, you've got to have a surfboard. Just sort of hangs on the bungees and it's nice and easy. Doesn't move around too much. For Gemma's birthday, I bought her a metal detector. And we love going on walks all around the countryside. We bring the metal detector. Over on the right is when we have all of our electrics. Down here, we've got two ways to charge the batteries. We've got the hookup system and we've also got our solar panel system. So the solar panels are 660 watt solar panels which come through the MPPT solar management system which then charge our batteries. And for our batteries which are two 200 amp lithium-ion batteries, those solar panels manage the batteries really really well all year round. 
the batteries, how everything in our van, from our lights to our fridge and to our water boiler. We have no gas except for our little gas stove that we showed you earlier. For the hookup systems, for the electric, we've got two hookup cables. So we've got this original one, which is about 10 meters, and then there's another one just in case we need to extend them. I think that one's about 25 meters. We've got a bike pump, just in case any of the tires sort of go down and we're out in the middle of nowhere. An extension cable, which can plug into someone else's house. It can come through here, and then our hookup system inside can then plug in there, and then we can charge our batteries. So first, let's go in the cab and we'll show you what we've got in there. Again, okay, doors locked. <coughs> to, um... No, I think it's fine at the moment. <laughs> With the door, if you need to get some on. Um... <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't notice, I am offering a free online training which will help teach you how to make van life free or profitable. In this video, I will show you exactly how to buy a van, how to fit it out in a proper way, and teach you how to avoid the mistakes that most people make, and all the other stuff that almost nobody else talks about. If you are thinking about converting a van or living van life, it'll be one of the most valuable things you will ever watch. Just click the link, register for free, and I'll see you there. Another great place to start is to get the van conversion guide. It's packed with useful information and includes 20 video lessons to help you convert a van. Check our website, all the information is there.